In linear algebra, we use transformations. Transformations in linear algebra are mappings from a space of one dimension to a space of another dimension. So if we have a we have a matrix A and we have a vector X, A is known and X is known, and they are conformable, then when we write something like that, so that for example, uh, A might be M by N and X is N by 1. The matrix A is a mapping from an n-dimensional space to an m-dimensional space. Well, let's, let's continue on because these mapping, we're going to come back to mapping in a few minutes. But, uh, in the meantime, what is an idempotent matrix? Idempotent matrices are matrices such that, so what's an idempotent matrix? Uh, by itself, right. So an item is one that you can multiply by itself, before or after you get back to the matrix. Wait. Can I show it? Good thing you asked, because that's exactly what I'm going to talk about next. An example might be a matrix of the sort. Suppose we have a matrix X. X is n by k, then the matrix formed by x, x transpose, x inverse, x transpose, or if you wanted the example, what's the dimension of, we'll call this m. m has what dimension? What's, what's the dimension of m? When all is said and done, what's the dimension of m? What's the dimension of x? What's the dimension of x transpose x? It must be, for the purpose of conformability, it must have what dimension. Well, you just told me that x was n, n by k. k. Right. So this part has to be k, k by n. something. K, yeah. If n is n by k, what's the dimension of x transpose? x is dimension n by k, so x transpose must be dimension k by n. K by n. So if everything is conformable, the part in the middle must be so that m is n by n. Suppose that n is greater than k. At most, What's the dimension? What's the rank of M? Okay. It can't be any greater than K. So how do I know that this thing is item potent? Well, X times X transpose X inverse X transpose post multiplied by itself is X X transpose X inverse X transpose. So that piece cancels with that piece, and we just end up with X x prime x inverse x. So that's an example of an item matrix. It's also known as a projection matrix. It's a projection operator. Because that matrix will take an n-dimensional vector and project it into the column space of x. So suppose that, suppose that y is n by 1. And it's known, the elements of y are known and x is n by k. And the question we have is, what linear combination of the columns of n is greater than k? The question that we have is, what linear combination of the x's will add up to y as nearly as possible? Well, to begin with, we've got a small problem being that k only spans, or x rather, only spans k dimensional space, so it's a uh, lower dimension than uh, y. So a graphical example might be now the back of this circumstance where. So to illustrate what I'm talking about, this thing looks like an artist's palette. Is the subspace, the vector space, spanned by the columns of X? So the thing that looks like an artist's palette is a k-dimensional vector space. And we said that n is greater than k, so that the vector y doesn't lie in the hyperplane represented by the artist's palette. So there's y, and this is the column space of x. And we want to know what linear combination of the x's allow us to model y as closely as possible. So what we want to do is project y down into the space spanned by the x's. And my assertion is that the item potent matrix that I just told you about, m, is the one that does that projection. And the error that I make when I use y hat to represent y <laughs> is going to be y minus y hat. 
or y minus x, x prime x inverse, x prime y. Or factoring out the y's to the right, I have the identity matrix minus x, x transpose inverse, x transpose, which multiplied by y. So the thing in square brackets is i minus my projection matrix, which multiplied by y. In the earlier versions of these, 